I think it's interesting just how different the term life sentence will be depending on whether you're in the U.S. or in Canada. In the U.S., you get a life sentence, but if you kill a second person, you might get another life sentence, and you kill three or four, and so on and so forth. And so you sometimes can end up with these very cartoonish situations where you get a judge who's saying to a 50-year-old man, okay, you, I sentence you to 300 years of hard time. Well, it's probably 20 or 30 years of hard time. After that, it should get considerably easier, being that you'll be dead and you know, lying on your back will probably not be as much of a chore at that point. Uh, unless we reanimate your skeleton, uh, make a puppet show or something, a puppet show of the dead. I'm not sure why I thought of that, but anyway, uh, either way, they wouldn't feel it. So uh, after they're dead, it's kind of the end of that. The sentence becomes kind of uh, foolish. Whereas in Canada, the whole difference is there, you kill a person premeditated, 25 years, life sentence. That's what we consider it in Canada. Well, you kill a second person though, you're still getting that same 25 years. And three and four and five, still getting that 25 years. So while there's the whole notion of every action having its consequence, there is no additional consequence after, you know, for those second and third and fourth and cetera killings. So it kind of leads people to believe that once you've made that first killing, you might as well go on a spree. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying uh, I'm a big believer in value. Uh, it's sort of treated like, it's sort of like a, like an all-you-can-eat buffet, only fatal for potentially many people. The analogy falls apart quickly.